Hi everyone, this is Srini and you're watching Basics of Python Tutorials on my channel Python for Microscopists on YouTube. And again, this is intended for beginner coders who are primarily students or researchers from life sciences, material sciences, or one of these sciences and engineering fields. If you are already a programmer, then you may not expect maximum value out of these videos. So in uh, today's tutorial, we're going to talk about, uh, actually, we're going to install uh, Python IDE and start, uh, start programming. So an IDE is uh, an integrated development environment. This is uh, where we can actually do our coding, testing, uh, you know, running the code and so on. And uh, let's get started by installing a good IDE for our work. And let me open the browser. And I've already searched for a couple of these IDEs. The one I use and the one I recommend is uh, part of Anaconda Python distribution. And uh, the reason I like this is because it already comes with a bunch of uh, uh, libraries pre-installed. Remember in our previous videos, we have used NumPy or Scikit image and OpenCV. And uh, these are all typically pre-installed on this uh, uh, in this distribution but you can also install PyCharm for example go ahead and search for PyCharm and this is also a pretty good uh, IDE that most people use uh, uh, most people you know with uh, who work with Python use and Visual Studio Code is also another one I'm not a big fan of this it's not really designed specifically for Python but you can go ahead and use it you know the one good thing with Visual Studio Code is you can open any type of file. You can open Python files, you can open Docker, you can open JSON files. Uh, you can open pretty much anything and it kind of recognizes, uh, you know, uh, uh, these files. So uh, Visual Studio Code and uh, so let's go back to Anaconda Python and uh, click on the first link. Go ahead and download your version, you know, if you're working on Windows or Mac OS or Linux, you know, go ahead and install Python 3.7. 2.7 is the older version. 3.7 is what's working right now as of uh, May 2019. So go ahead and download and install this. When you install Anaconda, it actually installs a bunch of stuff, including an IDE. And what else does it install? If you open Anaconda folder, you'll see Anaconda Navigator. This is nothing but like, uh, think of it as a welcome screen that has icons for all the individual programs, including Spider, Jupyter Notebooks, and everything else. I, I do not use this much. And also, I think you can use this to manage, you know, the uh, packages and all that. So let's not get into it right now. And Anaconda PowerShell prompt is, uh, I guess very similar to the Windows PowerShell prompt and also there is Anaconda prompt. This is very similar to the uh, command prompt that we saw earlier. Jupyter Notebooks, it's pretty cool actually when you are actually running through individual lines of code and you're trying to look at the results after the line of code and then you take that result and continue programming, Jupyter Notebooks is uh, it's, it's a pretty uh, very powerful uh, tool. It can be a very good teaching tool if you plan on teaching Python to someone else in uh, at your university or school. Um, uh, Spider, uh, S-P-Y-D-E-R, this is what we'll be using. Let me go ahead and click on it. I believe I already have uh, an instance of Spider open here. And this is the IDE. This is the integrated development environment that we will be using for our uh, uh, Python uh, tutorials. So uh, when I open Spider, this is what uh, you would see. And uh, on the left hand side, you can type, I mean, this is like a text editor. You can type anything on the left hand side. Obviously all of this is junk, but, uh, and the, uh, right away the program is telling me that whoa, this is an undefined name. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. So on the left hand side, this is a text editor. You can write your program here. On the right hand side, currently it's split into these two. And on the bottom, I have console. And console is, uh, uh, this is an IPython console. So I can actually, it, it's, it looks very similar to the Windows command prompt. Yeah, I can type the same commands, uh, dir directory, uh, you know, or, I mean, 
let's say uh, clear screen CLS or present working directory PWD. So it looks very similar to the uh, Windows command prompt, except obviously this is designed to run Python scripts. So I can type individual lines of code and then test it out uh, uh, in this console. And as you can see, the line numbers, you know, the actually they change incrementally. Uh, now it is number six. I'm going to clear the screen. It's going to change it to number seven. And we'll be using this quite a bit. Uh, now, I can have any number of these consoles. In fact, I can open uh, another IPython console. So here it is, uh, IPython console, uh, uh, you know, number three. I guess I opened number two and closed it. So uh, it's, it's starting the kernel. You'll see that in a second. And another tab to this history log, it kind of, as the name suggests, it logs the history of all the commands that you actually typed. And on the top, uh, currently, I, again, there are three tabs. What you see here is help and file explorer tells you exactly where you are. So uh, we are, uh, let's actually look at the, our present working directory. It is PFM Python file. So if I do CD space dot dot, we'll go up by one directory, right? And it reflects it up here, the file explorer. If I do CD space dot dot, now I'm back to C. So let's come back to our uh, folder. Let's clear the screen. And uh, so, so the, as you can see, the IPython console, so if I want to run one of these Python files, I can go ahead and double click, open it here and run, or I can type a command here to run one of these files. So if there is a file that is located in a different directory, of course, navigate to that directory or open that directory here and then uh, run those files. Uh, variable Explorer is something I usually leave open because uh, it's like a sanity check. When I uh, assign certain variables, then immediately I can see, or while I'm debugging, I can actually see where the issues are going on. Maybe sometimes uh, 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 one variable, you know, you think you assigned it as a float, but it is actually a string, okay? and I promise in a couple of minutes, whatever I just said, hopefully makes sense. Yeah, the float string and all of these, these are all different uh, data types. So, uh, so, so far we installed our IDE and uh, let's actually do some programming here. So it doesn't matter which console we pick. Let me just close one of these and uh, just focus on uh, the other one here. So you can write a program on the left-hand side, but I'm gonna just type uh, a few lines on the right-hand side here. So first thing first, when you do print, uh, let's say uh, uh, within the quotes, hello world, this is typically the first thing that programmers do when you learn a new program, print hello world. So let's go ahead and do that. And when I hit return, it's going to print hello world. What does print mean? Uh, Again, if you are absolutely new to programming, uh, print here doesn't mean I'm gonna print it onto a sheet of paper in a printer. Print means, okay, show this on the screen. Yeah, so when I say print hello world, and it's actually showing that on the screen, okay? So I could have actually typed the same thing here, print hello world. And this is an untitled document, so let's go ahead and save this document and let's save it in the same folder as Python files, yeah? So let's call this, uh, uh, let's call this first program, okay? So I saved it, and now I can actually click hit run, and it runs this. So now it's actually running this file. When I hit this green button, it's actually running this file called first program under, uh, dot .py, and uh, it's, uh, it's executing it here. In fact, if I open up this uh, folder, then you can actually see Python files. So our first program.py, this is the uh, file. And by the way, you can, I mean, you can, this is nothing but a text file. In fact, if I, uh, if I open Notepad, let me open Notepad. It's on the different screen. If I open Notepad and drag this first program, you see exactly what you see here. 
you could be actually running, uh, you know, writing your program in a notepad and still execute it here. Uh, print my second line or something, and then save this file and uh, come back here. It got updated right here, and now you can actually run it. Okay, now it's running line number one, line number two, and this is exactly how Python works. It goes line by line. Okay, so. Uh, Anyway, and you can, uh, right now, when we hit this green button, it's actually running the file and showing the output right here. You could have actually opened some uh, command prompt, and I hope it works right here. Let's see, where is the file, Python? Let's uh, navigate to our Python files uh, directory, and then it's called uh, firstprogram.py. So I'm gonna type Python space firstprogram.py, and it actually printed those hello world and my second line right here so you can execute python file or you can run a python file many ways as long as you have python installed onto your system since it's installed onto my system i'm running it from the command prompt i can actually run it from here i can run it from uh from here in fact if i uh let's say the green button right there is run this file i can actually select only one line and I can tie, uh, press here, this is uh, run selection or current line, uh, or you can type F9. Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, I'm using a program to record my screen that actually stops recording when I hit F9. So previously when I was demonstrating how to run a single line just by typing F9, I accidentally stopped recording and believe it or not, I continued talking for another 10 minutes not knowing that it stopped recording. So anyway, let me, uh, my apologies, and uh, let me continue. So uh, we were talking about, uh, uh, you know, printing these statements on the screen and everything. So let me actually start by talking about uh, variables now. And uh, variables are, uh, again, I mentioned this a couple of times in the previous video, variables are these uh, uh, placeholders in the memory. Uh, for example, if I would like uh, to store a number 5, I can define a variable a equals to 5. Okay, And immediately in the variable explorer right here, you can actually see uh, that a is uh, assigned a value of 5 and it's an integer. Integers are, again, as you know, numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I can assign, for example, now b equals 3 point. Yeah, I'm not typing 3.0 or anything. B is three, but I'm just doing, putting a dot. So when I hit return, you can see the reason why I did that. As soon as I put the dot right there, then the B is assigned uh, uh, a type of, uh, you know, the data type of float, okay? And the data type of A is an integer. Now, if I do some math between A and B, for example, if I do C equals A multiplied by B, then by default, C becomes a float, okay? Uh, and uh, same thing with division, for example. Now, other data types include string. So I can just say uh, B equals hello, okay? So B is a string now. It's not a number, it's not an integer, it's not a float, it's actually a number. Now, can I, uh, what happens if I multiply D by B? Yeah, let's say D multiplied by B. So it's uh, giving me an error. It actually says, okay, I cannot multiply a uh, sequence by non int of type float. So sometimes the messages can be very cryptic. So uh, you know, it can be difficult to uh, uh, interpret what exactly is going on. But in this case, it's pretty clear. Uh, this is a floating point number, and we are trying to multiply that with a string. That doesn't make sense here. Well, but what happens if I multiply A by uh, D, which is uh, five times hello? So it does actually work. You look at the output, of A multiplied by D, it is a hello, 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 five times, okay? So an integer, we can multiply that with a string, so, uh, you know, so uh, uh, it, it gets repeated that many times. Now, uh, what happens if I do A plus D? It should actually not do anything. It says, okay, you cannot add an integer 
and a string but we can add multiple strings let's say uh, e equals to world okay and uh, now if i do uh, d plus e i should see hello world yeah so it actually concatenates these two strings when i do this a uh, d plus e let's clear the screen and uh, let's look at a few other operators so again let's redefine this a equals to i don't know for the sake of simplicity let's say a equals to nine and let's say uh, b equals to two okay and a divided by b is 4.5 okay if i do c equals a divided by b and if i just type c it's pretty much the same thing yeah now i'm assigning the result to a variable called c okay and i could have done all of this on this screen actually again it would be executing uh, on the right hand side i mean we'd be seeing the result on the right hand side now if i uh, if i uh, let's actually do uh, c equals to a percentage b uh, well, sorry, wrong screen. Let's actually do C equals to A mod B. Yeah? And the value for C is 1. What does that mean? The percentage sign means remainder. Okay, It's called modulus or think of it as uh, the remainder. Now, uh, to multiply two numbers, I already mentioned, so uh, A multiplied by B then it's just nine times two. Now, if you want uh, to the power of, you know, a to the power of b, which is nothing but a square in this case, it's just two stars, okay, to the uh, power. Or I could have actually said a star star three, this is a cubed, yeah, which is 729, nine cubed is 729. And uh, any other uh, absolute, so if you have negative numbers, for example, a equals to minus five, and absolute uh, value of A is five, okay? And uh, you can also do rounding. So round uh, nine divided by two, it should be four. It rounds to the nearest uh, integer. Um, you can test it out. Uh, there are a lot more of these commands. You can go ahead and test it out, you know, uh, go do some Google search. Uh, now, one other, uh, actually, let's type a couple of these here. So C, uh, let's say A equals to five, B equals to three. Uh, and by the way, look at the variables here. They're updated constantly. When I did A equals minus five, that's the last thing here. Now I'm saying A equals five here. When I actually execute this, that gets updated right there, real time. So, uh, and, and now if the result doesn't make sense to me, I can actually always look at this and uh, go back and see, oh, this is exactly why you know, I'm getting a wrong value. With uh, image processing, we deal with numbers a lot. That's why this is very important to understand. You don't want to be working on, let's say, an integer numbers and you do some sort of math and then uh, rounding error happens because uh, if you're not using a floating point number, for example, and rounding error happens, then the image uh, may look very weird. Then you're not applying some sort of a function in a way that you intend to apply, yeah? So understanding these and understanding the rounding errors, these are all very important uh, for image processing. So, uh, so let's actually stop right here for now and uh, again, continue the next uh, tutorial with uh, uh, a, bit, a few more basics, okay? Thank you very much.